What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nathan and today we're going to check out a vehicle that's the first ever DLC 8x8 vehicle that was added to the game of Snowrunner. So without further ado, here is the KRS Bandit. Hope you guys really enjoy this. Please help support the channel by liking, subscribing, commenting, and please share the video as well. So let's get into this. Roll the tape. The company Pavlov ATVs is a startup company with a vision of creating ideal vehicles for the most difficult conditions. This Russian company produced a vehicle with that mindset that was called the P8WD or the Geocom PM, but we know it as the KRS 58 Bandit. This vehicle was equipped with a short body from an urban type bus and then was given a crane and a sideboard bed. The P8WD is a machine designed to overcome steep terrain, cross water, trenches, wetlands, and drive through deep snow. In the game of SnowRunner, the Bandit holds true to what it was designed to do. Although it has some tough hurdles to get by, it's a strong truck with unique traits. So before we dive into those pros and cons, let's take a look at the base stats. The KRS 58 Bandit is classified as an off-road truck. It weighs 7.7 .7 tons. In its stock configuration, it boasts a power to weight of A, a durability of A-, fuel consumption A-, fuel capacity is 40 gallons, it comes with a stock suspension, its tires also come stock with a 51 inch highway tire, its all wheel drive is always on, and its diff lock is always on as well. Alright, let's dive into the pros and cons of the KRS 58 Bandit. As always, bad news first, so coming in at the number one downside, it sacrifices durability for power. Ever since the Phase 2 release, the Bandit was given durable shared engines that were found on previous maps. However, its final engine upgrade found on the flooded foothills cuts durability in half for the sake of power. Being that its next best engine is still a S rating with better durability and fuel consumption, I felt this was a downside due to sacrificing that durability. It's well known that off-road class vehicles are just able to take a beating, but with this engine upgrade, the survivability in new harsh areas will cause concerns for drivers. Downside number two, conditionally unstable. The KRS-58 seems moderately stable, but I believe there's a condition for its stability. The vehicle has a very flexible frame, which can be good in some ways, but it can also disrupt balance as well. The condition for its instability, I believe, is the flexible frame and also every tire option except for the custom mud tires. Upon starting the game over, I tried using the Bandit with normal tires and I found myself tipping quite a bit, especially with cargo. The addition of cargo raised the vertical CG of the vehicle and the flexible frame seemed to bend enough from the weight just enough to tip the vehicle off balance. Using the custom mud tires is the condition which makes the vehicle manageable with balance. Those tires widen the vehicle's gait which helps it keep it on its wheels. Downside number 3, fuel tank and range. One of the biggest issues with the Bandit is its super small 40 gallon fuel tank. The vehicle does have decent fuel economy but this limits its range for missions. Having one of the smallest fuel tanks in the game for the hauling class vehicles is by far the biggest deterrent when planning long journeys. Due to this major downside, drivers are forced to adapt by either using this truck for short hauls or simply planning more fuel stops. Downside number four, lightweight and grip. Throughout the video, you probably can tell that the KRS has grip issues. This is attributed to being one of the lighter vehicles in its class at 7.7 .7 tons. The Bandit gets held up in moderate conditions from not having enough weight to push down onto the driving surface. However, it will wade through those heavy places because it sits on top of mud pits due to those heavy balloon type tires. Trucks like the Tega with the same tires can blaze through the same areas with ease due to their heavy weight upon large tires. The wheel spin can be frustrating, and this is why I recommend using the off-road gearbox to help slow things down. I believe that countering the weight issues of the Bandit could be a good strategy by using heavy trailers to push it down onto the driving surface, which provides more grip. And lastly, just be aware that the mud pits will slow you down significantly, but you will be able to get past them if you have some patience. Downside number 5, Effectiveness on Snow Maps. Our number 5 downside is somewhat subjective and some might not agree, but I feel the Bandit without the custom muds will struggle on snow maps. 
I'm a fan of the chain tires and the custom mud tires as well, but the chain setup and its flex frame make the vehicle unstable with a narrow tire profile. The newer snowy maps in SnowRunner have a lot of rocks and boulders everywhere, and the custom mud tires provide a stability bonus when equipped. We'll talk later on its rock crawling ability, but I do have to say the vehicle's performance value is attributed to those large tires. And finally, coming in at the number 6 downside, tire selection. As mentioned on downside number 5, the chain tires are rather narrow and don't provide stability like the custom muds do. Even though the Bandit does get the 51 inch custom mud tires, it would be nice to have a mud tire option and also a mud tire chain as well. This would solve our number 5 downside providing more grip on icy surfaces and adding stability as well. I really feel that all vehicles should have more options for drivers to choose from. If this vehicle had chain mud tires, I probably would have used the vehicle somewhat on phase 4. Alright, I'm glad that's over with. Let's get on to the good news. Here are the pros for the KRS 58 Bandit. Coming in at upside number 1, power. In phase 2, along with the addition of the KRS Bandit, they also added a final engine upgrade on the Flooded Foothills map. This engine takes the vehicle's power a bit further than the previous upgrade, but as described in our number one downside, you have to pay for it with durability. The engine itself provides enough power to sustain high gear without stalling, and it's great for heavy loads. It's really nice to see a power to weight that doesn't dip below A+, even with the heaviest truck additions. Upside number two, all-wheel drive and diff lock. The phase two release unlocks the bandit in your garage at any driver level. So basically, this vehicle can be used right at the start of the game with always on, all wheel drive, and diff lock. To start the game with an 8x8 truck with those features makes the KRS appealing despite starting with highway tires. The pairing of good power with always on, all wheel drive, and diff lock classifies this as an easy mode Russian truck. Upside number 3 tires and ground clearance. It's quite easy to see that without the mud tires, the Bandit would struggle with balance and performance in certain areas. Those large 51 inch tires allow this vehicle to wait on top of mud. You might get stuck in low gears, but those tires help drivers progress through deep areas. Another great feature the KRS offers is good ground clearance despite having no raised suspension upgrade. The Bandit already sits pretty high and has stability concerns, so I felt not having a race suspension upgrade was a good thing. Those large tires coupled with good power and ground clearance give this vehicle the ability to take on bumpy terrain. Upside number 4, Utility. While this truck cannot use the large crane like so many others, it has a unique small crane which we will talk about later. The KRS-58 can couple that small crane with a sideboard bed and attach a hitch trailer giving it 6 slots of potential cargo use. It also can use basically every add-on in the game as well. I also need to mention the Bandit's roof rack which gives supplies that give fuel, repair points, and spare tires. Utility is important because we all know those vehicles we just can't use due to lack of options, so for this one, I'm super thankful. Upside number 5, Special Crane. So before phase 2 we had two variants of crane, the American and the Russian cranes. The Bandit actually has a special long range small crane that has more power as well. I might also mention that it has pretty beefy outriggers which are needed to keep the Bandit's flex frame on the ground while using this crane. It would be nice if the outrigger extended farther to provide more stability but it does work well enough. This crane sits atop the vehicle's cab and fits really well with a sideboard bed. It also is beneficial because it adds weight to the vehicle which might help lower its wheel spin as well. And finally, coming in at the number 6 upside, durable suspension. I have to say I'm not necessarily a fan of the Bandit's flexible frame due to its balance issues we discussed earlier, but it does have upsides as well. For an 8x8, this vehicle takes rocks and boulders better than the rest. The large custom muds and the flexible frame allow smooth transition over rocks without fear of being high centered. So to sum this one up, some downsides in areas can be upsides in others. The frame and suspension is definitely an upside for traversing rocks. Alright, so moving on to my personal ratings for this truck. For power, I gave it a 4 due to sharing a strong engine that allows carrying heavy loads. For terrain navigation, I felt a 4 was fair. While it does suffer with wheel spin due to weight, its ability to crawl over rocks was quite impressive. 
Due to power, always on, all wheel drive and diff lock and the ability to use this vehicle as soon as you unlock the garage at level 2, a 4 is a good score here. Drivers would find it tippy with the narrow tires so that's why it wasn't a 5. For aesthetics, I'm not keen on how it looks but I don't dislike it as well so I think a 3 is fine. Stability is sketchy without the mud tires and the flexible frame can be influenced to sway under load so I felt this was below average. Due to average economy but a super small fuel tank, a rating of 2 is more than fair. The roof rack supplies do give it more range which is the reason it's not a rating of 1. Having a special crane and being able to use pretty much everything, this is a sure rating of 5. Great power, always on, all wheel drive and dip lock, massive tires, but the lack of weight causes this vehicle to suffer from wheel spin due to lack of grip. A rating of 3 is fair I think. So in conclusion, the KRS Bandit is a powerful, versatile truck with limited range that struggles with wheel spin. I don't want to sound harsh, but the vehicle's success seems to be centered around the custom mud tires. Being a fan of stability, I just can't justify using the narrow set tire variants with its flexible frame. I think if this vehicle weighed as much as some of the heavier trucks in its class, its performance would be pretty wild to see. For an 8x8, this thing can take boulders relatively easy with those massive tires, good ground clearance, and its flexible frame. I believe drivers can manage the instability with tire setups, but to mitigate wheel spin, heavy semi-trailers will help somewhat. I'm starting to like the high range gearbox, but in the video we saw plenty of times that the gearbox manipulation to low gears was a must. So to wrap this up, I like the Bandit more after reviewing it and I feel it can be a good asset for drivers to have. The biggest issues for me are the small fuel tank and stability, but as driver scale increases, the effectiveness of this truck will increase as well. I'm a believer that this vehicle's downsides can be managed if we just step outside of our comfort zones. Try it out and let me know what you think. I hope this review gave you a fresh new perspective of the KRS 58 Bandit. Please smash the like button. Definitely share this video with someone who is struggling with the game and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any future content. Hope you all have a wonderful day. God bless and stay upright.